Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 14. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some helpful CSS tips and tricks that you're gonna use pretty much every single day uh, whenever you use CSS. So uh, right now, if you take a look at my document, I have got a paragraph over here that says style me. I've ripped out all of the other code, uh, except for this link to my external style sheet. Um, so if you guys haven't watched the video, the previous video on external style sheets, go back and watch that and you can learn how to link to an external style sheet. Um, and then I have my external style sheet over here, which uh, is almost blank. Uh, so right now I've got a paragraph that I've selected and then I've opened up my curly braces, but I haven't applied any styling to this, which means that if I open this up in my browser, this is exactly what it looks like. Um, in fact, let me just zoom in a little so you can see that this is an unstyled paragraph, but uh, because I'm gonna be changing font sizes in this tutorial, I actually wanna be zoomed all the way out so you can see the difference between one font size and another because right now this is 14 pixels and we're gonna increase this uh, to something a little bit bigger, right? So uh, one of the first CSS tips I wanna show you guys is how to make a CSS comment. So you open this up with a uh, forward slash and a asterisk and then you end it off with a forward slash and an asterisk and everything in between these two symbols will be commented out. That means that I can type notes to myself uh, or I can uh, comment out some specific code or something like that without actually deleting it from the file. And uh, yeah, it's, it's basically the same thing we use an HTML comment for, except uh, this time uh, it, the syntax is just a little bit different. We, instead of uh, using these uh, funny symbols, we are using uh, an asterisk and a forward slash, and then again, an asterisk and a forward slash. So uh, that's just how to make a CSS comment. Um, let's go over to the next line, and I wanna show you guys uh, some font uh, sh pro property shortcuts, right? So uh, in the previous video, we learned how to change font family and I set that equal to Helvetica. Let's see if I can spell it right this time. Yeah, 10 points. Uh, so finally on the third video, I get it spelled right. Right, so whenever I save this, that's gonna change the font family of my text to Helvetica. Uh, you can see that this now looks very different to uh, the previous font, right? Let me just uh, pull that back to 100% again, because I also wanna show you guys a few other font properties, which uh, if I type font, you can see I've already got the shortcuts, or not the shortcuts, but the, the other font properties showing up over here. So we've got things like font variant, font style, uh, font uh, weight, and font size. So let's work with uh, font weight, which um, font weight determines whether your text will be bold or not. So you can either give this a value of normal if you want normal text, or you can give it a value of bold if you want bold text. Uh, and there are actually values in between. So you can have um, 400, which is usually normal text, but you could also have uh, something like 700, which is like semi bold. And then you've got values like 900, which is fully bold. So. Uh, this does depend on what font you're using. Um, not all fonts have uh, different weights, but uh, a lot of them do. So it, it uh, really depends if you want to use a font, uh, just check if there are multiple font weights available, uh, and then you'll have things like values like 400 or 600 or 900. Uh, but I'm just gonna use bold, uh, and that would be fully bold. Then I'm going to choose font size, and I'm going to set this equal to 28 pixels. Now, uh, you can actually use a bunch of different CSS measurements. Um, so CSS supports centimeters, inches, millimeters, and all of those uh, values, centimeters, millimeters, all those, those values are fixed values. They are static values, they will never change. Um, uh, so if you ever wanted to create a document that was made for printing or made for, for 
actually yeah being printed out then using centimeters or using uh, inches or, or, or points makes sense because then you know exactly how big the stuff is when it's going to be printed out but most of the time we don't print websites out right and we're looking for websites that will scale uh, relative to the size of the screen which is where we want to use values like pixels because one pixel can be bigger on my computer than it might be on somebody's phone. Um, so using pixels is at least uh, better, but um, the best value to actually use is something called an M. Uh, now 28 M is going to be massive uh, because M is uh, the size of one M in the current font. So if we take a look at this now, this M right there, that is the size of one M right uh, so if I change this to something like 2m uh, our text should get twice the size it is now so let me go ahead and save this come back over to the browser and hit refresh and uh, yeah you can see the text is much much bigger it's twice the size and it is now bolded uh, so I have this naughty habit of using pixels instead of uh, m's uh, so you can see the text just changed slightly smaller uh, but uh, most people do encourage you to use m's these days instead of pixels especially when it comes to fonts so uh, make your decision read up and uh, decide whether you want to use m's or pixels and uh, uh, yeah the, the main thing i wanted to show you guys here is that we actually have shortcuts in CSS. So I explained a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't actually need to because the one thing I did want to explain is that uh, in CSS, along with all the properties that we can change, uh, we have shortcuts. So right now we've got a font family uh, property, we've got a font weight property and a font size property. It's a little bit annoying if I'm going to type all of these out over and over and over again whenever I want to change something. Uh, so there is a shorthand shortcut called font. That is it, right? And whenever you specify font, you can then change the values of a certain or a number of properties using just one shortcut, right? So if I set a size of, uh, let's say 36 pixels, and I'm going to set a, uh, font family again of Helvetica. Um, now you can see I'm using the font property to change two values instead of one. So let's come back here and hit refresh. And now I have text that is 36 pixels uh, in size and it is also Helvetica in family. But I can also change the font weight. So font weight needs to be at the uh, beginning of the shortcut. So let's save this, come back here and hit refresh. Uh, and now it is, has been bolded. You'll notice if you um, play around with these values and like maybe put bold at the end, uh, certain properties will now be ignored. So let's hit refresh. And now you can see font family got ignored. Uh, the font size is still right for some reason but the font weight also got ignored. So whenever using shortcuts like this, uh, you have to make sure, or um, yeah, you have to be aware of the order you're putting these things in. Uh, every single shortcut has a specific order that it needs to be put in, and you can find these orders whenever you Google uh, something like that. So if you want a shortcut for uh, colors or you want a shortcut for background colors or something, uh, just Google CSS background color shortcut or shorthand and uh, that will give you the exact order. For example, font, um, if I type italics in here as well, or italic, uh, this is font style. Style goes first, weight goes second, size goes third, and family goes fourth. So that is the specific order you have to put these things in. If you do not put them in this order, like I showed you, uh, the CSS will not work. So let me come back here and hit refresh, just prove to you this is now ita italicized, bolded. This, it's big in font, it's 36 pixels, and um, it is a font family of Helvetica. So my shortcut worked, uh, and that is pretty much the only shortcut I know offhand. Uh, most other shortcuts I do have to Google if I wanna use them. 
And uh, that is all I have for you in this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one where we will be taking a look at how to use CSS colors. I just want to send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design and web development. And they can teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field. And they'll do it within 12 weeks which I think is a rather impressive timeline. So go ahead and check out their website. The link is in the video description. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Hey, thanks for staying until the end of the video. That really means a lot to me. Now, while you're still here, there are a few things that you can do to help. First of all, if you haven't already, subscribe and watch another one of my videos. And if you wanna help me make more content more often, or if you feel that my content is just worth paying a little bit of money towards, you can check me out on Patreon. You can also check me out on social media. I will leave the links next to me. So go ahead and click on something and I'll see you guys next time.